I've been writing up a bunch of short dungeons lately, including this brand new postcard dungeon I just got back in the mail. And it's got me really thinking about how to make a fun dungeon. In this video, I wanna share a couple of tricks I like to use to make my dungeons just a little bit more fun to run and to play. I just got this huge stack of postcard dungeons in the mail back from the printer and I'm really psyched on how they turned out. I got a ton of them because I give away one of these postcards in every order in my online shop. It's been an entire year since the last postcard, since the, the soggy ruins of Sentinel Keep. So I thought it would be cool to upgrade it with the Ogre King of Hollow Hill, especially since I'm having a big Black Friday sale this weekend. It's 25% off the entire shop jpcouvert.com from Friday the 29th through Monday, December 2nd. Every order is gonna get this free one-shot dungeon postcard and a new mysterious wizard sticker. I just added my latest zine, Castle Gloom Shroud, to the shop. It's a Castlevania-inspired dungeon with 15 different locations and loads of vampire-themed encounters. It's system neutral, so you can run it with any game. I've also got the Starborg zines in there. If the title didn't give it away, it's Star Wars-inspired hack of Morkborg. There's a player rule book, a GM guide, solo rules, so you can play by yourself. And there's also a starting adventure that I'm really proud of. It'll help you learn how to run the game while also being a great way for players to learn how to play the game too. Of course, Goons and Ghosts and Teenage Mutant Tunnel Goons are in the shop and all my map making guides like how to draw dungeons and cities and world maps are in there. I'm really proud of how easy those guides make it to jump into map drawing without having any experience. And I've even got some more system neutral fantasy adventures too. The Great Goblin Flight is a, a awesome one-shot quest to throw into your game if your players need to get from one location to another far away location super fast. And then there's the Temple of the Waking Thread. That's a good one to drop in if your players need to resurrect someone important, like if one of the party dies and they, they need to come back to life somehow, make them go through a quest to, to explore this temple to revive their, their fellow player. So yeah, tons of tabletop role-playing game zines for sale. I've got stickers and some enamel pins in there as well. This is the only time of year I put my shop on sale, so Black Friday weekend is the time. Thank you so much for indulging my shop promo. Now let's talk about how I made this dungeon super fun. The first thing I always do is try and think of an interesting concept. In the case of the ogre on Hollow Hill, I wanted to write up this dungeon around the idea of this big orange ogre who finds this magical scepter and he believes that the scepter makes him the king and he starts demanding attacks on everyone in the area and maybe you can tell where this inspiration is coming from. You can totally use real world stuff as inspiration or you can use other fictional media like comics or movies or video games, combine multiple ideas together or apply a different theme or setting to a, a source of inspiration. Really just use whatever gets you excited to create something. That's the best way to come up with a, a fun concept. So this greedy orange ogre concept gives us enough to hook the players. They're gonna wanna get in there and show this ogre what's up and maybe even find some magical treasure that they can keep as a reward. So we've got a concept and some hooks to make the players wanna go check out this potentially dangerous place. Now let's start filling out some rooms of this dungeon. So I like to start with John 4's five room dungeon approach and kind of build on top of it. So there's a, an entrance with a guardian, there's a puzzle or role-playing challenge, there's a trick or setback, and then there's the climax, usually a big boss fight, and then the last room is the reward. This is a great structure to start with, but it's also kind of linear, so I like to tack on an extra room or two, make things a little more explorable. Just give the players a, a few choices of which direction they wanna go in. 
And you don't really have to follow the five room structure exactly. You can switch the rooms around or for this dungeon, I've combined the boss fight and the treasure, the, the four and five rooms together. And I've even sprinkled more rewards throughout the dungeon. There's actually three of the six rooms have treasure in them. Role-playing encounters can also be tricks or setbacks. Puzzles can be combined with a fight. If we just made every dungeon the same five-room formula, players would definitely catch on. So mixing it up, adding, combining elements makes your dungeon feel a little more interesting while going room to room. So I've kept room one straight up as the guardian, just like the five room formula. There are these strange toad creatures at the entrance that are chowing down on a pile of turds. And if the players get too close, they attack. It's an underground cave dungeon. There's some weird toad creatures. It's not really that out of the ordinary. Pretty straightforward entrance with a guardian. Now the next room is a sort of puzzle, setback, fight, encounter, maybe combo. There's some half-buried zombies blocking the way. Again, buried zombies underground. It makes enough sense, right? And then in room three, there's this pit with a turd monster that's trying to escape. The trick here is there's also a magical golden horn at the bottom of the pit. So the players, they can easily avoid this monster but then they'll lose out on getting this treasure. So what happens, you know, if they help the monster out of the pit? What happens if they jump in the pit to grab the horn with the monster still in there? I don't know what's gonna happen. We gotta play to find out, right? And now at this point, you're probably asking yourself, what's up with all the turds? <laughs> Well, imagine the players are all excited to go chase this big greedy ogre out of town, maybe get some cool magic items in, in return, and they get into this dungeon and it's just filled with turds. <laughs> maybe this is some insight into the type of games <laughs> that I like to run, but anyway, the ogre scepter, right, this golden scepter that the ogre's all proud about is actually cursed. And usually it turns whatever it touches into gold, but now the curse has it turning everything it touches into turds. And it's the same thing with the magical horn in the bottom of the pit. Usually you blow the horn, a bolt of lightning comes down from the sky to smite your enemies, but the curse makes it so you blow the horn and you summon a bunch of zombies from underground instead. And I'm hoping with these examples, now you can kind of see how once you get going with a, a couple of creative ideas, the rooms in the dungeon just start to write themselves. It doesn't have to be that complicated really for it to be super fun. A room with a few half buried zombies is, is a pretty straightforward dungeon room, but tying it back to a piece of the treasure that the players can find, it starts to make the dungeon feel more dynamic and interesting. Without being too crass, the players walk into this dungeon, they start seeing these piles of turds everywhere. They're gonna start thinking, what is going on? It, I guess it makes sense why these toads are there, like the, the turds have attracted these weird frog creatures. Things just, just start making sense, right? If you can come up with a fun, hooky concept to get your players interested in going to the dungeon, Mix up the, the five room dungeon formula, give the players some interesting choices and add some fun or whimsical or even gross elements to the dungeon. And then make sure each room ties back to that first concept in some way. You'll have made a, a really fun dungeon that your players are, are gonna be excited to explore and you're gonna have a lot of fun running it too. Now one last little tip here. I think writing up a, a one-shot dungeon and then spending a little bit of extra time to, to make a map can be super rewarding and also level up the dungeon fun as well. Now, because I'm trying to fit this dungeon onto a single postcard front and back, I've taken this illustrative approach to each room. This is really to help the GM that's receiving this postcard with their order to run the dungeon more easily. So sure, I've got description on the back of the postcard, but having the, the Veritoads and the Ogre with the Scepter illustrated also just really helps con convey the theme and the tone and the style of this dungeon. Now, all of that said, 
you don't have to draw a dungeon map like this. You can keep it simple, just some outlines of the rooms and then show how the dungeon connects. And I've got lots of videos on the channel about drawing cool looking dungeon maps like that. You don't have to have any drawing experience to draw cool looking dungeon maps. So definitely go check out some other videos because I think drawing dungeon maps can really add another level of fun to just the process of creating your own dungeon. I hope this video was helpful and has inspired you to write up your own dungeon. I think making these little five, six, seven room dungeons is such a fun way to create something rather quickly and it's an awesome way to start making your own stuff for this amazing tabletop role-playing game hobby. Check out my online shop this weekend for the big Black Friday sale. Lots of fun stuff on there. Everything's 25% off. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!